What's up, Texas Lexus friends? We're in our work clothes today because today we're going to try to install wheel spacers. You know, we got these big bad 285 6518 BFG KO2s, and while they're great tires, it doesn't look any tougher to me. They're kind of hidden within the body of this vehicle. And after looking online, I've noticed that there's a lot of uh, guys using spacers that push it out just a little bit, like one inch, and all of a sudden the whole rig looks tough. So today we're going to install these and try to walk you through it. Let's take a quick look at the rear tire from the back as well as the front. And now we'll take a couple looks at the front tire and how they're tucked into the body of the vehicle. Are we good? Are we, are we live? Are we live? You just said that. <laughs> are we live? Yeah. Okay, guys, so we ordered it locally. We ordered from a company called Cruiser Outfitters. They're in Murray, Utah. Figure, especially nowadays with um, the way business is going, it's really good to, to order locally. So if you can, please do. Uh, I went with the Slee Spider Tracks 1.25 inch wheel spacers. I'm really hoping they're not too wide, but I've heard great things about Slee, so I just want to use them as the brand that we're using. Let's take a look and see what they look like. Dun 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 Here's what they look like. Spider Tracks. Whoa, they're blue. Anodized. Man. Oh. That's a quality product, isn't it? Look at that. I hope. Okay, what else is in there, buddy? Got some instructions. What is this? Can you please lug it? nuts? Please. I have my face out of this. Your face isn't in it. Another one. Oh, look at this, buddy. A spider sticker. Can I place it? You can have that. We'll put it on the refrigerator, the garage fridge. And hopefully instructions. Okay, I'm back, dudes. It's a different day, so I'll probably have a different hat on. But I have the same clothes on because, you know, we're in quarantine. <laughs> So I went out and I bought a brand new jack, I bought some jack stands, I bought some tools, I bought a torque wrench, I bought some uh, sockets I didn't have, and now we're going to do our best and see what happens. Alright guys, real important step, check your box and make sure that you have the fronts ready to go when you're working on the fronts. I've got the rears locked up for whenever I'm ready to uh, work on the rear. Again, this is a 2004 Lexus LX470, your vehicle may vary slightly, so always check your owner's manual. I'm just reading the directions on how to jack up my car safely. We're going to remove the wheel ornament. Pretty cool. We're going to loosen the wheel nuts while they are on the ground. Otherwise, you might, you know, crank your uh, nuts so hard that you end up knocking your vehicle off of the jack or the jack stand. And here the manual tells us our jack points, which I'm now going to look at under the vehicle. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not obviously, I'm not it because I'm looking online and I can't find the right place to put the jack. So... Obviously the factory jack points are on the frame. That's when you're using the bottle jack, the emergency jack. I've got a brand new floor jack. Some people are saying put it into torsion bars. I don't even know what it is or what that looks like because I'm ignorant. Um, but the ones online where they're putting it, it looks kind of sketchy, you know, and I'm sure it's figured out, but to me it looks sketchy. Somebody doesn't know anything about this. So I'm gonna start with the factory spot. Um, put jack stands under. I'm gonna try to just do one tire at a time. Hopefully I don't roll through my brand new garage door. I've got the rear wheels chalked. Come on in. E-brake pulled. Hope for the best. Okay, while we're underneath the car here, guys, this here, this is not your frame, okay? This is your running board. Don't put a jack here. This. This is your frame. See the difference? This is your little light from your running boards, right? That's what lights up. Pretty. This is your frame. This. Right here. See where I'm at? Got this thing. And you got this spot right here, okay? It's got a little bit of a circle. That's where I'm going to put it. As you can see right here, we're getting ready to meet the metal with the jack. Okay, we've got the uh, truck up in the air. We've got our tire down here for safety. We've got jack stands down there for safety. And I still don't feel safe. We're about to put these blue anodized wheel spacers on. First up, we need to put on the uh, red Loctite. As you see, the Loctite's on. Now we've got our wheel spacer in place and we are going to Put the nuts on and pointy side in, okay? Pointy side in. Okay, we have our nuts in place, and we have a torque wrench 
and we need to set the torque, which I've already done, to 130 foot pounds. And we'll hear it click. Ooh, real pretty. <laughs> so, we're gonna bust out our 7 8 inch, inch socket. You don't want this rotor to spin while you're uh, torquing this on. So when you first put it on, you start hand tightening, it doesn't feel like it's gonna move. The first thing I tried is I tried putting a screwdriver in here to stop it. My screwdriver is so cheap, I could tell it was about to start bending. So I had my daughter sit on the floorboard, crank the brakes just to keep daddy safe. She's a great, great helper, great listener. And um, she's gonna be a great little mechanic someday if that's what she chooses to do. So when you're ever putting like a tire on, kiddo, you gotta put these on in a star pattern, okay? Now you know what that means? You don't wanna just tighten the first one down and then work your way around because you'll be getting an uneven torque all the way around. So you start here, and maybe you go here, and then maybe you go there, and then maybe you go there, and then you go there. You see how I just did a star with my fingers? Yeah. What'd you do? So we are on here. We got Loctite on. These are torqued to 130 pounds for a 2004 LX470. Now we're gonna put the real factory tire back on. We're gonna hand tighten. The uh, lug nuts, take away all the jack stands, then we'll lower everything down. Make sure you don't leave something weird in a weird place because you don't want to do any damage to your vehicle on something so simple as this. I've now hand tightened all the lugs. Okay, now that it's on the ground, we're going to uh, retorque the factory lugs at 97 foot pounds um, and we'll work our way around the vehicle. See up there in the front? That's the front tire that now sticks out just a little bit from the body. Now how do you know if it's done anything? Let's go to the other side. No front tire. No front tire sticking up. It's just that little bit of a difference. Okay, y'all. It's very possible with the way people use impact wrenches now um, that you're going to have some stuck lug nuts. And I just texted my neighbor and asked to borrow his. And then I Googled it and remembered the old pipe trick. Didn't have a pipe. But my brand new jack handle is a pipe. So here's what's cool. It works. We'll show you how to do it. I'm gonna slide it over. All right. And then crank down. Boom. Hear that? That is the sound of a poorly put on lug nut by an overzealous mechanic. No offense, I like my mechanic, but. I had this buddy, Jack. He was like as old as my dad, and uh, he helped me work on cars when I was a kid. And I literally remember him telling me this pipe trick. I said, it's been so long as I've worked on a car. Forgot about it. Thanks, Jack. Good man. Boom. Breaking the seal. Oh, yes, that one's off. All right, as we do this, let's go on to the next hub and work on the next spacer. Up there. Okay, so I'm freaking out because I put it on like this. And get an angle over here, buddy. See how it doesn't fit? And then I turned it to the next one. Didn't fit. Then I hit it a few times with, you know, with a mallet. That was not doing anything. So you keep going. Doesn't fit. Boom. There's one exact way to do it. And what's weird about that is I just put the last one on and I got the exact bolt pattern right the first time. So I just assumed that any of them worked and I thought this one was broken. So just realize if you start freaking out, just keep turning it until you find the right fit. Thanks, baby. Welcome. Okay, so I'm looking at the manual here. Hopefully you guys can see that. I am reading this angle as this flat spot here, right? Because otherwise, I don't see anywhere in here I can go. This is too tight. I would snap whatever this little metal deal is. So we're gonna go in here and just jack stand the shit. Woo! Got the back tire off. You know, every every lug nut I've had so far has been a freaking nightmare. So we're using the breaker bar. Moving on. We're just gonna clean up the threads just a little bit. Put more Loctite on it. Have the kid hit the brakes. Blah blah blah. Now for the more mechanically minded people out there. Uh, would you mind leaving a comment explaining why the disc brake is so much smaller on this and why this hub area is so much larger? I'm just curious about that. I mean, the front one doesn't look like this, so maybe somebody could explain to me what's going on there. Teach me something. I'd appreciate it.
Let's get some of this goo on there. Watch out if you have little young ones at home. My daughter thought this was gel icing. First back tire is done. Sticks out just a hair. You see way up there in the front? A little black shadow in the front, that is the same thing, okay? Just a hair. And then, let's go to the other side, which isn't done yet. This is the last tire to be done. Okay, I think the mud flap's a really good way to show the difference. Okay, here's a stock wheel, no spacer. As you can see, it's pretty much centered to the mud flaps. And here it is, with the spacer. As you can see, it's pushed out to the right side of the mud flap. Okay, the next thing I've done now is just set myself a little reminder. I need to go back and check my torque on everything, essentially redo the process um, in 50 miles. So thank God we're in quarantine because otherwise I'd have to do that like tomorrow. So let's give it a quick drive and see if it feels weird and uh, let you know. Driving around hoping the wheel doesn't fall off. I will say this kit was really well built. Um, I mean, the parts feel like really good quality. I had everything I needed. I did not need to buy any extra Loctite. Um, I used every bit of it because I felt like that was the right thing to do. And I've never done this kind of project before. I had to buy a bunch of tools, so that's something to remember. If you don't have a good jack, if you don't have um, you know, a breaker bar essentially for the nuts, those kind of things, make sure you have them before you start or else you're gonna have to take a break and uh, go buy some stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do a full lock turn now. Shouldn't be any rubbing, but if there is, we'll find out. Nope, did a full U-turn. No weird noises, power feels right, everything feels right. So hopefully uh, we make it to 50 miles, we check the torque, and there's no major issues. Uh, but if there are, you'll find out. Yeah, I mean, feels pretty much the same to me. I think anything anyone's felt, that's, uh, you know, maybe they have a better seat of the pants radar than I do, but. I think the bigger tires was probably the biggest change that I've noticed in the way this vehicle drives. Uh, when I stepped up to two, 285, 65, 18s, that's where I was like, okay, this feels different. But I'm used to it now, so, um, you know, no big change with the, uh, the spacers. Unless the wheel goes flying off and I hit the ground. Okay, here we are with the AHC up. AHC up. So we just drove 50 miles, 50.2 miles to be exact. Now our job is to go back around, pull off the wheels, and we're gonna go check the torque settings on the wheel spacer and make sure it's at 120 pounds. Now again, that's for this exact model, 2004 Lexus LX470. If you're doing wheel spacers, check your uh, pamphlet from the from manufacturer and make sure you know exactly what your torque specs are gonna be. Just to reiterate, we set them at 130 foot-pounds the first time around with Loctite. We're going back at 120 foot-pounds now because we're not trying to break that original seal, but we're going to make sure they haven't backed out over the 50 miles. And then from what I've read on uh, I Hate Mud, these are usually set around 98 foot-pounds. So I've already gone around on three, so far so good. If for some reason one of these had backed out, we start back on step two, which is re-loctiting, resetting them to 130 foot-pounds. Fingers crossed we don't have to do that. Three of the four have been good. Let's check the last one. If you haven't changed a tire in a while, just make sure that you uh, loosen the lugs while it's on the ground so you're not in danger while the jack's up. Whew. That's weird when you hand torque them all and then you can't get one loose. That one 
came off easy. Easier. What a weird angle. Wow. Okay. These tires are very heavy, as some of you guys might know, and very awkward to lift up. Um, it helps if you cradle it with your feet and then use your forearms to kind of lift through the spokes. But um, also realize you're in kind of a really wild, compromised position, so jack stands are very much recommended. I'm not a big fan of blue anodized metal in anywhere that someone can see it. I think it's a really beautiful product they've built, but I'm glad I don't have to look at it. So once you have your Lexus cap on, if you don't like the blue, you're not gonna notice it. We're gonna lower it before we crank them on super tight with the torque wrench. And I'm happy to say that no repair is needed. Um, I will make sure, just periodically, maybe once a year, I'll check these and make sure that they're fine, but. Um, supposedly, if they're fine after 50 miles, they'll be fine for the life of the vehicle. Cool. Alright y'all, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. It took me a couple of YouTube videos to piece together exactly how to do this, but I didn't see one for the LX470, so I hope this helps you guys out. If you have any questions or if it's something I left out, please leave a comment, and that way I can probably answer it while my mind is fresh on this. Other than that, happy wheeling. Please subscribe. Thanks very much. Okay, all in all guys, it's a very, very simple, very slight upgrade. It's just like I like my vehicles, right? I don't like them crazy modded. I like them essentially what a factory plus would look like. And these uh, wheel spacers from Slee, they do it, the spider tracks. I'm into it. I thought they were great. Now let's just hope that my wheels stay on, they don't fall off and I'll be a happy customer. Thanks for watching Texas Lexus. Appreciate you guys. Keep me going making these videos. It's a lot of fun, thank you.